look at mounting a CephFS volume in Linux using the Fuse and Kernel client. In the previous video, we have already installed a Ceph cluster and created a CephFS volume using the CLI, but also the web UI. So right now, um, you can see that we have those three VMs here and demo one on, to, on which we are right now has the admin label. That means that in the Etsy Ceph uh, directory, we have the client admin key ring. This key ring, if we look at it, enables us to do everything everywhere. Now, we don't necessarily want to ha hand out this admin key ring to everyone. Sometimes your application owners that need to mount the CephFS volume need to be restricted uh, for doing just that. They want to mount an FS volume. So traditionally, that was quite complicated going into CephFX, uh, creating the key rings, uh, figuring out what to put into the key ring, what permissions. Um, but this is now very easy. So um, we will now use a command like this, CephFS authorize the file system name, find the client ID, the path in CephFS, and then we uh, give permissions. Like we could say read only, write, or read write, and the capabilities of taking snapshots. We can also restrict that to certain subdirectories. So we could say we want to have the root file system as a read only and then a subdirectory in read write. So anything in a subdirectory would be available in read write um, and the the parent would be available only in read mode. If we only want to allow them to mount a subdirectory, easy as that, we just remove the, the root mount and this will generate us a key that has these permissions. So let's look at that. Um, we want to get the name of our file system. So this is FS test. And now let's create a, a, a test client uh, like this. CephFS authorize the name FS test and then the name for our future client. And then we just say that person can read write to the root directory and any subdirectories. Let's do that. And we get a key. Now, um, this key, if we, uh, if we look at the, the key ring file like this, it is restricted to this file system, FS test. Um, sometimes we're not sure. We want to have a key ring that's a little bit more flexible. So we can unrestrict that name and just say, give that client access to any file system that we have right now or in the future. And we do that by using an asterisk for the name of the file system. This would pretty much work on your cluster. The other change that I did is instead of read wide, I added the S so we can take snapshots with that client. So now we get the key ring, we put it into the key ring file. We can also look at the key ring file. You'll see uh, now the, na the FS name option has vanished, right? Apart from that, it's, it's the same. We have RWX here. So the metadata servers will allow this client to take snapshots of that file system or any file system for that matter. Um, now let's create a, a key. We will later need that to mount. So this key file is pretty much the same thing as um, the key ring file, but the difference is that it only has this key bit here in it. And we need that for the mount, um, mount commands later. Let's protect those files with, um, uh, with a read write option just for the user itself. And now we are right now on the admin node, but I want to show you how you mount that on a node that has no admin capabilities. 
So we're going to take our key ring and key file and the Ceph conf, and we will send it over to demo2 in its Etsy Ceph directory. And then we head over there. So in demo2, we now we are now in the Etsy Ceph directory, and we can see that we receive the, the key file, the key ring file, and the Ceph conf. Ceph conf is the basic Ceph conf, so there's no hidden things in there. Uh, it just says, what is the FSID of our Ceph cluster and which are the monitor hosts that we want to connect to. And now um, the key ring file, just a as a refresher, is what we just created on the other node. So now this node would be the node, for example, that your application owner has. You sent them these three files and would be ready to go. Uh, let's create a, a directory where we will mount our file system. And now we are um, in front of a decision. Uh, there are actually two ways to mount CFFS. The first one that I want to show you today is using Fuse. The uh, CFFuse is an alternative way of mounting CFFS, and it works completely in user space. That means it's a little bit easier to work with different versions and have an old kernel old system, but still be able to mount a brand new Ceph cluster or the other way around. So you don't need to worry too much about kernel versions, um, though you are you will be suffering from a little bit less performance in Fuse. Um, so using Ceph Fuse is quite easy. You install it, um, provided that you have the right repositories. You see here that we're using the IBM Store Ceph 5 uh, repository here to install this. Um, there was installed prior to the installation. It's necessary that um, we can even use this. Um, now that we have Ceph Fuse installed, we can use that. So these are the options here. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. So uh, what we would do is we would say Cephuse, then where do we want to mount it? So to the, our new directory, what um, client we want to author it, what's the keyring of that client, and then which uh, CephFS volume do we want to mount? Straightforward, right? So let's do that. And this will now go in the background, and we now have the uh, CephFS mounted in mount FS test. As you can see here, um, so we have some files in there. Let's check them out. This takes a little bit. I have about 10,000 files in there. Um, and as you can see, it's, it's all fine. Um, now, obviously, we, we are happy about this, but we want to make this permanent. So to make it permanent, even still today, we just put it in FSTAP. And um, in this, it would be picked up by system D. So let's do that. First, um, we want to unmount our temporary mount. So now it's it's gone. Good. Um, now we go into Etsy FSTAP. And we want to put our... Um, our entry in here. So I've already done this to uh, spare me the typing, but it's very similar to what we just uh, gave Ceph Fuse. So the directory we want to mount it, um, then what we want to, um, uh, what type of file system we will have, and then we want to add a couple of options here. So the ID is the name of our client, and then we have FS, this is the CephFS volume that we uh, that we want to use. You can supply that, but in our case, we only have one file system, so we can even simplify that and remove it. After that, uh, we change the FSTAP. It's um, advised to reload the daemon, and then we can just do mount my file. And this would work. It reads it from AppStab and then understands it. Um, starts the Cephuse 
client and it's now mounted again. Um, all right. So this is Fuse. The kernel client is very similar. So um, this depends that your kernel comes with Ceph, but pretty much all kernels these days are uh, compiled with Ceph included. Um, so the only thing you need is the mount helper. Using those, the kernel client allows you to have more performance, but it's difficult to um, to keep track of the versions. Though I would recommend that you use the kernel client for most use cases, unless you have a really good reason not to. So first, let's check if the mount helper is installed. You that do that by uh, just checking if the uh, mount of Ceph uh, binary is there like this, it's not there. Uh, we can ask DNF, hey, what um, what kind of package provides this? So DNF provides and then the path of uh, the file that we're missing. And it tells us, hey, there's a package Ceph common. It's available from our IBM store Ceph 5 repository. So let's install uh, Ceph common. DNF install Ceph common. The Ceph common package um, has a couple of um, RFC light tools, including the the basic Ceph command. So that's a, a very useful package to install in, uh, in any case. But it also gives us the uh, the kernel mount uh, helper. So after doing that, let's look at uh, the binary. It's there now, so now we can mount it. So there have been um, a little bit of a change. Um, the very new way of mounting CephFS is like this, mount dash T Ceph, device string equals path to be mounted and amount options and all kind of options. And now the new way of doing, uh, the old way of doing it, which includes specific, in, and that is IBM storage Ceph 5 is in, Instead of the equal sign, we have the colon. And um, that's important to remember because else you'll get into troubles. So we are um, based on Ceph Pacific or IBM Storage Ceph 5. So we will use the old way to do it. So the um, old way, in our case, would look like this. Mount dash T Ceph. And since we have the Ceph con, this can it can figure everything else out by itself. Uh, so we don't need to um, add a lot of information on the device string, like adding all our monitors that we want to have. Um, we have our mount point here. We're using uh, the client.test uh, to mount. It has a secret file here, right here. And we're trying to mount FS test as a subfs volume. Let's do that. And it works. It's easy. <laughs> and it um, automatically got the list of monitor nodes that we have. So if one of them is not available, it doesn't matter. Um, the mount will still be able to reach out to the other monitors. As long as they have a quorum, they will grant us access to the CFFS volume. So now we, um, we can look at the content again, you see it's much faster now compared to the user space already. Um, all right. One last time unmounting, because now we want to look into um, FSTAB again. We want to um, exchange that with the, the options of using the kernel client. So Actually, let me go back. Let me comment this so you can better compare it. So instead of none, we, we say colon dash. Where we want to mount it, that's uh, the same. But now instead of fuse.ceph, we just say ceph. And then we have name. That's the client name that we're using. And that's pretty much it. We save that, we uh, reload systemd so that its systemd services can see the change in fstab. And now we want to mount this again. Let's check it out. Yep, that looks good. 
And now, um, uh, let's hit it again. And there we see the content. All right. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something today and saw how easy Ceph has become, especially in the area of Cephex. Uh, we have made a huge progress of making this so much easier to use. Um, see you next time. Mm -hmm.